Hey everyone, I am back from Spiel Game Fair in Essen. It is the largest board game convention in the world. It is uh, quite a unique convention. It is just ridiculously big. And I did have the opportunity to play Frosthaven on the Cephalofair Games stand that they had. They had quite a large stand there showing kind of Gloomhaven or you could buy Gloomhaven. And most of the demo tables were there for Frosthaven. I think they had three tables, maybe four tables that were solely just there to demo Frosthaven. It was a very hot game out of the show. You had to get there really early in the morning as the doors open really, rush over to the stand to to put your name down because they were basically doing hour-long slots so each slot was an hour and they were doing it on the hour and you had the opportunity to to come in and and, and play basically uh, kind of a condensed scenario if you like it was not representative of what a regular scenario would be in Frosthaven but it was enough to give you a glimpse of what the characters are like the new characters are like and a couple of the new enemies what their kind of abilities do and of course for people who maybe haven't played Gloomhaven before and were maybe interested in Frosthaven it was sort of like an easy scenario for them to be able to just kind of get in and play a little bit without being too worried you'll have to excuse the shaky cam footage here I was just using one of my handheld cameras and also I was uh, trying to capture audio but the audio was just basically unusable because of how loud of the halls are there so there's no usable audio here so i'll just talk over it and, and explain what's going on so as you can see the stand was uh, really quite a, a big stand you got the three kind of demo tables that they had there and essentially it was very busy the entire time i never saw this stand kind of um empty and i saw a lot of people actually buying gloomhaven as well from the stand so that was always really really good to see and uh, the sort of demo tables had uh, two of the demo tables at least had this kind of 3d scenery um sort of built up for this scenario to kind of make it a little bit more kind of interesting to look at rather than the standard dungeon tiles one table was using the standard dungeon tiles but two were using this kind of thing and, and this was one of the kind of ones this wasn't what i played on so this was the other table with scenery they got to play you can see people playing the new characters so this was the table that i was on at the time with this kind of 3d scenery we had a three room scenario which um was fairly easy just a couple of enemies in each room i think there's three enemies in the first room and then a couple of enemies in each of the side rooms it was a very simple scenario was not really meant to be challenging really you could burn cards on every single turn i'm pretty sure and you'd still have stamina to finish this scenario it was more of a case of just giving people an opportunity to play something in an hour and we got to play against some new enemy types so you can see their frozen corpses that they were a new enemy type as well as you might just be able to see snow imps there from the footage but yeah these were the people who were on kind of like the uh, the demo a little bit before me on the previous day so i went across the stand a few times um during the show just to sort of take some footage and, and see some people playing and uh and as you can see they're all playing the new characters so you've got the geminate here being played uh, over there you had the the death walker also being played as well the drifter as well being played there and uh, the bone shaper so all of these characters um they're not final components here the models i believe the minis were final components but the actual kind of cards themselves were kind of like a like a, a little like a special set of cards that they'd printed just for this event although obviously the iconography and everything you can see there is the new iconography and and will represent what the final cards will look like but the actual cards themselves were uh, they were actually giving away the decks for free so at the end of our demo we had the option to keep the deck it was just all of the level one cards not including the x level cards that we we had access to during this demo so we got an opportunity to kind of play with all of the level ones and take them home with us personally i i didn't see too much point in that because it didn't include the x cards and really you know didn't include any other components that we would need the player mats here as well of course are actually just like paper so the actual kind of character cards were just made of paper so definitely not final but the minis were so this is when i actually sat down and i started playing my demo you can see the minis there the mini quality was was really good i thought that these looked really really nice on the board and uh certainly the scene he made it look a lot more dramatic as well but it worked really well and, and as you can see some of the components you'll you'll sort of notice aren't quite final as we kind of go through uh through this but i, I believe the actual standees were, were pretty much final so these these characters although they do look a bit thin there actually looking at the footage they might have just been the uh, kind of like laminated paper just like these player mats 
can see there the player map is just sort of laminated paper i chose to play the geminate um the geminate um was a character that i was really worried was going to be um kind of maybe a bit too complicated or, or confusing and hard to get into which is the reason why i chose to play it actually because i figured that why not throw myself in the deep end with a character that i had some kind of reservations about but actually i'm kind of quite happy to report that i had a really fun experience playing the geminate it seemed to flow really really well i just concentrated on basically switching forms between my kind of melee and ranged forms my left and right side pretty much every single turn really and then just looking for a good opportunity here or there to sort of burn a card and I had a lot of very good, just good value Gloomhaven cards, I would call them. Just decent value attacks, good value moves, decent initiatives. You know, I never really felt like I was under too much pressure. But of course, this scenario was um, easy. So, you know, it wasn't particularly hard for me. You could also see just there briefly that the Geminate comes with two minis. One for your ranged and one for your melee form. So you can swap that out to try and remind yourself. Or at least your, uh, your teammates will know what kind of form that you're in. So... You can kind of uh, visually have something on the board there. Um, in this demo, the, the most kind of like popular character, if you like, or the, or the character that seemed to dominate this entire scenario really was the Drifter. The Drifter, uh, in my opinion, seems very, very strong. Uh, the guys who I was who I was playing with, all of the guys I was playing with, were actually very experienced with Gloomhaven, so it was great. We all managed to kind of just get going and playing. Didn't have to worry about getting stuck into the rules too much. And uh, yeah, the guy who's playing Drifter, he basically just figured it out very, very quickly. And uh, he dominated this scenario. He was killing things left, right, and center, um, you know, and, and uh, was not struggling with his charges. Uh, he was having a great time doing it too. I do think that this Drifter character is going to end up being a lot of people's fan favorites. I know a lot of people look at the character and think, well, it doesn't look particularly exciting. But I think once you get playing with it, I think a lot of people will uh, change their mind on that. And it will actually end up probably being the strongest or at least one of the most popular characters from the starters in Frosthaven. Um, yeah, I mean, he basically did this entire room, side room on his own here. Uh, I think the, the Deathwalker tried to get in to help, but the guy just killed things so quickly. And there you go, kills another thing. And it was it was just over. Um, so we decided to split the party on this one, something you don't normally do, but because we wanted to open both rooms and see what happened. So me and the Bone Shaper player were doing this side and the, uh, the actual Deathwalker character was eventually, as you can see here, teleported using their shadows. The Deathwalker as well was, uh, was surprisingly, was surprisingly, surprisingly strong i say surprisingly I, I think through some of the changes that we've seen over the cards since the original kickstarter campaign it's definitely had a lot of work seems to be ticking along and the guy playing it didn't seem to have any trouble with his shadows was made a bunch of shadows used them really effectively seemed to really click right off of the bat with this character so he was having no trouble at all he was also having a good sort of strong performance the only character really that i noticed was a little bit underpowered in a way was the bone shaper the bone shaper player was also the least experienced or at least the most rusty out of everybody other sort of player he you know he was sort of apologetic that he was a bit rusty but um, he he basically just didn't really have the time to get stuck into the scenario. I didn't think this demo was a very good showcase for the Bone Shaper character because his character wants to, you know, spend turns getting summons out and then try and use those summons. Well, by the time he took two turns doing that, the combination of us three had actually killed most of the enemies sort of on the board. And then his summons were kind of like lacking a focus and were not really, uh, were splitting at times as well to try and go to the other room and... Yeah, so it just didn't really, uh, it wasn't really a great showcase for the Bone Shaper player, but he did uh, actually on the last turn of the game draw a times two to kill the final boss, which is what you can see there. Um, we did manage to clear the final scenario. I tried to knock this over without knocking over the scenery. Didn't do a very good job, but but he he, he died. So the Bone Shaper player did get to triumphantly kill the last enemy on the last turn of the game in the allotted time that we had, which was an hour. So that was uh, that was really good. So really my kind of thoughts really, um, there's some footage here of just like the, the stuff that's in the box that they had in the in the display cases but my, my general feeling with 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 frost is it flowed really well the characters all sort of operated pretty well um i say it was a very condensed demo so i didn't really get much chance to kind of really see how these characters would react under pressure the two enemies that uh, well the three enemies that we had as we had um we had frozen corpses, which are basically like a living corpse variant from Gloomhaven, uh, which had shield, so a little bit harder to deal with. Um, we had snow imps, which are the new imp variant, and they actually applied brittle on their attacks, which is the new condition, which means that the next time you take damage, you take double damage instead. On increased difficulty, these things are going to be an absolute pain because that brittle effect is going to scale horribly with uh, increased damage. You know, these guys weren't attacking for a huge amount, so 
you know, times two on a small attack isn't really going to feel too bad. But once you're getting attacked to sort of four and five by some of these enemies and Brittle is being chucked in as well, I can see Brittle being a really big problem for players. So something to consider there. And the final enemy that we faced was the Burrowing Blade, which was uh, definitely the scariest, I think, at this kind of difficulty level out of the bunch was uh, really uh, had a decent amount of health and also was kind of hard to dispatch and had a target too and yeah was just generally quite nasty had a decent amount of movement as well so got kind of up close and personal very quickly when we opened the door so burrowing blades are definitely going to be ones to look out for so speaking to some of the guys around the booth it seemed like there was some kind of hope uh, that we may sort of start to see Frosthaven before Christmas this year people getting their their kickstarters fulfilled before Christmas so yeah maybe a little bit earlier than we thought I personally thought that we probably were unlikely to see Frosthaven this side of Christmas that was just my my feeling is that I, I just didn't feel like it was actually going to happen but maybe maybe it actually will maybe uh maybe we will see it for Christmas which would be a really nice surprise for a lot of people and I'm very very keen that as soon as I get my Frosthaven I can jump straight in and start making content about this game and, and character guides and, and all of that good stuff so I'm looking very much forward to, to getting my hands on the game finally okay so that pretty much wraps it up I'm definitely very excited about Frosthaven again now after having a good opportunity to play a big thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon and the subscribers on Twitch and in particular to Truck Driving Gamer and Mike Kira for the legendary support on Patreon Thank you guys, I appreciate it very much. If you would like to come and hang out, come over to twitch.tv slash mandatorycrest every Monday, Wednesday and Sunday where I'm streaming Gloomhaven most of the time, sometimes other board games and tabletop-esque type games as well. And soon, hopefully, very hopefully, Frosthaven as well. Okay, all that's left for me to say is thank you again so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Bye. I think so. Yeah. Oh, oh. Scout oh, wins. That's, that's the place came from. Scout <laughs> That's the blessing so, from. Uh, uh, Isaac, at this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh, for allies in the digital version? <laughs>